Hello students and welcome to the third chapter of class 6. The title of the chapter is separation of substances. So let us begin. Why do we separate substances? So we separate substances to separate the different and useful components. It may also be used to remove non-useful substances or it may be used to remove impurities or harmful components. Right? So when we separate components, we throw away the component which we do not need or we throw away the impurity. Or sometimes if both the components are useful, we can use both the components separately. But, but separating is very essential. So we need to separate harmful substances or non-harmful substances with which it may be mixed. Sometimes we separate useful components if we need to use them separately. The substances that are separated, they may be separated based on their different shapes or different sizes. Right? Also, the separate substances may be present in any state of matter may be solid liquid or gas so think about it if you have made your favorite lemonade or your favorite drink then how many ingredients it needs also what do the different particles look like do the particles settle down is the color uniform throughout or are they different let us talk about a mixture what is a mixture? Mixture is composed of two or more substances that are combined but can be separated into its original parts. A mixture can be broadly classified into homogeneous mixture or heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture is the type of mixture that has a uniform composition throughout. Uniform composition, for example, a lemonade. The different components present in it uh, cannot be separated or cannot be seen. However, a heterogeneous mixture has varying composition. For example, different amount of one component and different amount of component two. Let us see some of the methods for separation. These all methods of separation mentioned here are physical methods. For example, hand picking, threshing, winnowing, sieving, etc. Hand picking is when we separate some lar slightly larger sized impurities for example dirt or stone or husk from rice or pulses so we just use our hand and pick the impurities apart the second process of separation is threshing threshing is done by beating the grain seeds for example in this uh, picture here we can see that the stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds it can also be done with the help of bullocks or even machines. The third method of separation we are discussing today is winnowing. Winnowing separates the heavier component from the lighter component. So the lighter component is blown away by air and the heavier component directly drops and forms a heap near the platform. Right. The fourth process is sieving in which we use a sieve. This is also a kind of process in which the larger particles stay on top of the sieve and the finer particles, they just go down from the sieve gaps. However, we should remember that some of these particles are visible and some are not visible. So how do we separate such components? For lighter impurities, we may use the process of sedimentation, decantation or even filtration. Sedimentation happens when the heavier component settles down. For example, mud. If we have muddy water and if we let it settle for a few hours, then we see that the mud will settle and the clear water is, uh, stays on the top. And this process is called sedimentation. In this process, when we separate the clean water from this mud by simply pouring the clean water in another beaker, it, the process is called decantation. However, in this process, the dust particle, lighter particle on within the top layer of the water surface will also be decanted into the second beaker. We may also use a finer process of using filtration, that is by using a filter paper. This involves separation using a filter paper, which have even smaller pores. The mixture is poured on the filter paper and the solid particles do not pass through it. Only the filtrate goes through the filter paper and the residue is separated. Let us talk about the very important process called evaporation. Evaporation is the process of conversion of water into its vapor. 
water gets converted into vapor is known as evaporation this evaporation technique takes place continuously wherever water is present the evaporation technique is one of the most common techniques that is used in the separation of salt from water from seabeds right when water is evaporated the water from the sea is evaporated then heaps of such salt is visible to the for separation the second process is condensation condensation is somehow the reverse of evaporation in which water vapor is converted back to its liquid form here, here you see the small droplets these are the condensed form right so in this example we can see evaporation and condensation happening together so we are boiling a kettle of water the heat you know water is evaporated however if we use a pan and there is some ice on top of the pan then this steam will directly convert into again into liquid water so in this process the whole evaporation and condensation process is shown together let us look at the process called saturation saturation is the amount of substance that water can dissolve if we use a few spoon of salts in a glass of water then we see that there will be a point in which no more salt can be dissolved in that particular amount of water that solution is said to be saturated however if we start to boil that solution containing water and salt then on heating some more amount of salt will be dissolved so heating can lead increase the saturation of any liquid a solution is said to be saturated if it cannot dissolve any more of the substance in it let us review the whole chapter so we have learned about hand picking winnowing sieving sedimentation decantation and filtration separately we have learned that husk and stones can be separated by hand picking husk is separated from heavier seeds by winnowing there's difference in size of particles so utilized to separate them by the process of sieving and filtration we can also use decantation or filtration to separate insoluble solid and liquid we have learned about the process of evaporation in which liquid gets converted into vapor we have learned about condensation in which vapor gets converted into liquid we have also learned about a saturated solution in which no more of the substance can be dissolved but the amount of substance dissolved can be increased by heating the solution we have also learned that water can dissolve different amount of soluble substances in it with this we have come to the end of this lesson so with this we have come to the end of today's lecture thank you for listening through it if you like the video please like and follow for more thank you